If I 
There'll be no more holding back I'm staying here and now Send me Ooh. I'm looking for a man that I can For someone who thinks of others I'm looking for a man who'll go all out Hello Is it me you're looking for? Lord, I know it's hard to find Someone who wants to go Someone who wants to serve you and lay down his life. Lord, I know there's such a need in this lost and dying world. It's time for me to say. want to hear about the call of God. Like Jonah, I was running far from you. Hello, I'm the one you're looking for. I surrender my life. I accept the call of God. I will go as far as you send me to the ends of the world. Oh Lord, you've won my heart. There is nowhere else to go, and there's no one else to work for but you.
thank you. Holy Spirit, have your way. Wash us with your blood. Give us boldness. Come into your presence and to receive from you. We are grateful to you for this evening. Lord, change our lives tonight. Help us to receive from you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Well, you're welcome to our first night. Um, it's good to see you. Amen. Amen. And I'm praying that God will speak to you this evening or morning. Evening. Amen. Amen. Why don't you close your eyes and speak in tongues for a short time?
Christian for so many years. But I want to know, I want to know. Let 
hated Jacob because of the blessing with which his father blessed him. AMPC. AMPC. And he saw said in his heart, the days of mourning for my father are very near. When he is gone, I will kill my brother Jacob. These words of Esau, her elder son, were repeated to Rebekah. She sent for Jacob, her younger son, and said to him, See here, your brother Esau comforts himself concerning you by intending to kill you. So now, my son, do what I tell you. Arise and flee to my brother Laban in Haran. I heard earlier, a few days, two days ago, the most Googled question in 2022 is, can I change my life? Can I change? Can I change? The answer is yes. Can I change? How many of you have asked yourself, can I change the direction of my life? Can I change my life? Can something change? Can things be different? Um, the answer is yes. Now Jacob is being chased by his brother to kill him. And I'm sharing from out of following our followers of those who through faith and patience they have inherited a promise okay then I'm on the chapter that is the art of following Jacob and I'm on the point which is one of the points there which I'm about to share with you when I share that point I may preach for 15 minutes but when I share that point with you we will close I just want you to know so it's a one point day okay are you there? No, no. There are many points. There are about eight or nine points in that chapter. I'm sharing one point and I want to go home. Now, uh, Jacob was being chased by his. Now, Jacob is something, somebody wonderful. You know, when I was naming my son, I named him James, but I wanted to name him Jacob. But I had a lot of opposition. Because yeah. Jacob is a thief. His name means supplanter. Like somebody who removes another person to stand there. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's Jacob. Oh, Holy Spirit, I thank you. And Jacob is chased out of his house. Because his brother wants to kill him. That's the state we are finding. Can my life change? You see. Now, but the same Jacob, he's linked to the eternal identity of God. From Genesis to the New Testament. God, when God's passport is, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and not Israel. Israel would have been the improved version of Jacob, but God identifies himself as the God of the swindler. 
Can my life change? That's the question I'm answering. God says, both in Malachi and in uh, Hebrews, I think. Jacob have I love. And I don't like Esau. I don't want him. I love Jacob, the thief. He doesn't say Israel. All through the Bible, God likes Jacob. What is, what is the story of Jacob? I find myself more attracted to Abraham from the beginning, following the voice of God. He's a fine guy. Isaac from the start, obedient son. Even when they say lie down on the altar, he says, sure, daddy. Many things. When your father chooses a wife, you flow. But Jacob, I find myself, I don't know about you, but I find myself relating more with Jacob. And the Bible says, we, we ended in Genesis 27. The Bible says, and he went to Haran. He, he started heading to Haran. What is his state? He's wanted. Somebody wants to kill him. What's his second state? Genesis 28 verse 10. The Bible says, so he was somewhere between Beersheba and Haran. Okay? And in between there, something happened to Jacob that changed his life. And tonight, I believe God is going to change your life. In between Beersheba and Haran, something changed his life. And the Bible says, he came to a certain place. Give, give, me, give me King James for this part. Give me King James. He came to a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set. And he took off the stones of that place and put them for his pillows. The second thing, the first thing about Jacob is that he's a thief. You know, there's obviously something wrong here. I can fix just this. I think it will be good. Are you there? You've gone home. He's a thief, number one. Are you listening to me? Because I've almost finished preaching, I promise you. He's a thief, number one. Number two, he's, he's being chased out of his house for murder. Number three, he's broke. This is what people don't realize. Do you know how broke you have to be to use a stone for your pillow? Do you know how poor you have to be? You don't have a jacket. You don't have a book. You don't have a shoe. I mean, there's nothing else that you could choose to put your head on. Give me my scripture, please. A stone. And he put it for his pillow. A towel. A bag. Something else apart from that. And he laid down in that place to sleep. And the Bible says, and he dreamed a dream. And behold, a ladder set up on the earth. If you come tomorrow, we'll talk about this part. So I'm just teaching on Jacob for three days. I have to follow Jacob. But today, I'm talking about something else. The ladder set up on the earth and the top of it reached the heaven. And what I'll say today, probably more important than, I don't know, to me, I feel more strongly about today's point. Are you with me? Next. And the top of it reached to the heaven and behold, angels ascending and descending on it. This was actually a vision he saw of Jesus. Because if you remember, when, uh, when Jesus sent out the disciples to go in twos, when they came back, he said, I saw the heavens, and I saw a ladder, and I saw, and, sorry, I saw angels ascending and descending on the Son of Man. So he exchanged, put it back, the ladder for the Son of Man. Because Jesus was the ladder that would connect as the mediator between God and men. So he was, it was the exact same vision that Jesus had, but instead of a ladder, it was the Son of Man. This was a vision of the coming of Jesus. It's one of the, one of the prophecies. Okay? But that's beyond the scope of today's sermon. But when, 13, the Lord now, the heaven opened. You know, have you ever, it's going to rain, and then you see that the clouds, like there's a hole in the, in the yeah. It's called an open heaven. And then the ladder was from the hole to the earth. Then there were angels ascending and descending, ascending and descending, ascending and descending. Then he said, the Lord was standing on the top of the ladder and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham and Isaac. They hadn't yet added his name to the identity. 
But, but you see, all through the Bible, when God met Moses, he said, tell them I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Even Jesus said, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So, when the ladder closed, he said, the land where you are lying, I'll give it to you and to your seed. Jacob didn't ask for anything. Because he was blessed. On Friday, we were talking about blessing. That's different. That's the third point. Now, 14. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth. And you will spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And in thy seed shall all families of the earth be blessed. And everybody is blessed by Israel. Okay? Now, 15. This would have been, and behold, I am with thee, the presence of God. And I will keep thee in all the places where thou goest. And I will bring thee again into this land. And I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. 16. And Jacob woke up from his dream. And he said, Surely, this is the song we sing. Surely the presence I, of the Lord is in this place. I, I can feel his mighty power. And his grace. This is the song, this is where we get it from. I can feel the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Come on, sing it. Surely the presence, surely the presence, surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. But they never had and I knew it not by his part. So we'll come back to that tomorrow. That he's here and I didn't know. Now, 17, then he said, how awful is this place? NIV, I believe. NIV, this is, you are awesome. awesome in this place. It's another song. So many songs came from here. God, you are awesome in this playing. place. I'm a father. Play. You are worthy of all praise To you our hearts we raise You are awesome in this place Mighty God That was the other song that came from here. Okay? Then he said This is is the first time we hear of the house of God This, there were no speakers There were no lights there's no air conditioner, no LED screens. But he said, this place, the house of God. I'm coming to that. This is the house of God. This is it. Then he said, this is the gate of heaven. This is the access point to heaven. Like whenever, and all through his life, whenever he needed to access heaven, he came back here. All through his life, yes. He always said, if I go and even appear to him, say, go back to Bethel. This is, he, he, he recognized an access point. Okay? Now, this is not what I want to preach to you about today. This is what I want to say to you. Then Jacob rose up early and took the stone that he had made for his pillows and set it up. He made it a pillar, made an altar. And then he poured oil on the top of the stone. Now, this is the part that confused me. The next verse. And he called the name of that place Bethel before that it was called Luz 20. And Jacob vowed a vow. There was no need. Nobody asked Jacob. Tonight I'm talking to you about a vow. A covenant. You see, there are people who have shaken hands with God. There are people who have signed on the dotted line with God. There are people who have made a covenant and shaken hands with God. There are people who have done a business deal with God. And tonight I'm talking to you about doing business with God. Nobody asked him. God said, I'll bless you. I'll make your seed. I'll give you this. i do this. i do that. And the Bible says, when Jacob woke up, Jacob vowed a vow. He made a vow to God. He made a covenant with the Lord. That day. And that was the day that his life changed. Can my life change? A vow is a covenant that you make between you and God. It's not something that anyone else is involved in 
Isaac wasn't there. Rebecca wasn't there. Esau wasn't there. Laban wasn't there. Leah wasn't there. Rachel wasn't there. It was him alone. And he made an agreement and a covenant with God. Now, I didn't know this. I thought everything is by prayer. And quiet time. Which is true. But I didn't know that. As we are here. You see, one day I saw somebody driving a, a car. And they asked. And, I asked and, and somebody next to me said, oh, wow, that's a very nice car. And another person next to us said that he has a contract with. Because a, who you have a contract with and who you have an agreement with, it affects the quality of your life. And I've learned in the last few weeks that, like as a pastor, we're all pastors, but some people have a contract. You know, I heard Bishop Oye Depo saying that church growth is up to 5,000. After that, it's a covenant. Yeah, I didn't understand all this. I realized that, no, there are people who have sizing. Laban didn't have that contract. Labor has not signed anything with God. Today I'm not talking, I'm not, today there are no pastors, membership, no, I'm talking to believers. Nobody asked Jacob to sign a covenant. A covenant is not God comes to you and says, I want to come into an agreement with you. No. Jacob, when he woke up, he oiled, finished everything. He said, the Bible says, and he vowed a vow. That's what I want to talk to you about tonight. A vow. Dr. Rodney told me a story. He said when he was in his early 20s he was playing golf in Johannesburg where he grew up. He said they rented an apartment which was near the, a golf course. And he used to play there sometimes. And he said God told him that he'll be a missionary to America. But he didn't even have a church. And he has finished Bible school. And to, to make ends meet, he was teaching at a Bible school. And every time he teaches, people start laughing. People start falling down. So, the lecturers wanted to get rid of him. Everybody in the school wanted to push him out. And he was struggling to pay bills every month with his wife. And they were, he said, you know, like when the money comes, by the second of the month, the money is finished. And he said, and it's like, his whole family is also looking at you. He said, you are going to be a missionary. He said, God is going to use you. You know that thing? Those of you who understand, like, oh, where is it? It's been one year, two years, three years. What's going on? And he said, in depression, he took his golf bag. Went to play golf. Oh, I feel the Holy Spirit. And as he was on the fairway, he got to a particular place on the fairway. And he threw his clubs down and he knelt down. You see, that, that's, that's the day between Beersheba and Haran, that place. It's a holy place. And he told God, if you take this African boy, around the world the message that you have given me the gift that you have given me, I'll never change it I'll say it everywhere I go as you're telling me this story then he burst into tears he said I'm just so grateful that I've seen country number 86 when he was in Ghana he said and I've not changed he mentions the date May 19 something he mentions the date he entered into an agreement with God are you listening to me? I don't know. If, I don't know if you are, you are understand. Your silence. I don't know if you are sleeping or you are. Okay. So he said, ten years later, after that, he was having a mass crusade in Johannesburg, and he had forgotten about everything. And in the afternoon, he started to go and play golf at his old golf course. So he was walking on the course then he got to the place he said even as he when he got to the tea box he started crying he was seeing where he, the apartment where the landlord is looking for you to take your money out to, to, to ask for money and they are chasing you and he remembered his children 
couldn't afford so many things for them. He started getting emotional. Then he, we said, when he got to the place, then he remembered the vow that he made at that place many years ago. And he realized that he has entered, you know, what, what tells me about that story? You know, I've heard him say it three times, but when he told me himself, what tells me? He said that he realized that he has been taken around the world within 10 years. Then he didn't know any pastor, like another pastor, apart from those in that Bible school that he was teaching. And I've come to see that we are all serving God, but some people have some form of an agreement with God, which is a little bit different. And a vow goes beyond even prayer, I believe. He made a covenant with the Lord. And tonight, I want, I want many of you to enter into a covenant with God. Now, you know, you don't know the reasons for things. That's what I've, I've more and more, I've come to see that, you know, the song that says everything is not how it seems to be, is one of the most true statements you ever hear. You know, C.C. Winans, she was invited by uh, Whitney Houston to join on the song, I'm Every Woman. You know that song, I'm Every Woman. Yeah. And C.C. Winans told her, you know, one of C.C. Winans' friends told me, hey, C.C. Winans was in tears. I know it will be good for my career. I know that I'll become famous. I know. Then she told her, in our personal relationship, I know it will be affected by what I'm about to tell you. But I told God at the beginning of my ministry and my calling that as for my voice, it belongs to God. I'm sorry. As for, as for me to sing. And she told her, there are no swear words. It's not about sex. It's woman and person. I know, but I signed. I signed on the contract. Jesus. I don't know if I'm talking to myself this evening. That, for me, I've, I've learned, you know, that's why everybody's level of commitment is a little bit different. Everybody's level of, even between husband and wife, between friends, between brothers and sisters, everybody's commitment to God is different. And Jacob vowed a vow. That's why there are not many Christian millionaires. That's why there are not many, because you know, for God to give you, this is the covenant of prosperity. When Jacob signed this covenant, he was, he was entering into his prosperity. Billy Graham preached at a crusade in Dallas. I, I'm just, this is the preaching is finished. So the rest is stories. I can only tell stories. He preached in a crusade in Dallas. And when he finished preaching, there was his friend, John Bolton. He had a friend, a German. And he called him after the crusade. You didn't speak about the cross today. He told him. You know what I was about? This John Bolton guy was one of his converts. <laughs> he, 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 the convert was rebuking. He said, you didn't mention the cross today. You didn't. And he said, how can anyone be saved without a single mention? You didn't mention. I'm telling you what makes people great. You may be, that, that, I'm trying to give you something behind the scenes. I've come to see, I thought that if you are good at preaching, you pray a lot, you have your quiet. I realized that no, some people have signed a contract for a certain type of ministry and they've signed it with God and that's what, it's, it's, it's a level of commitment. Some people have given themselves to God. You see, it's not even a pastor. He's a businessman, but it's a certain commitment and a vow and a clear covenant he has made with God. Billy Graham said he argued with the guy. What do you do? I mean, why should you question my preaching? When did you come? Are you alive or you've gone home? You are very quiet. I hope everything is okay. I don't know if I'm getting through or am I, am I, I don't know if I'm explaining myself. Okay, you are very quiet. You are unusually quiet. Then, he went to bed. He thought about it the whole night. In the morning, he woke up and went outside. He knelt down. At that time, his crusade, when he has a big crusade, 1,000, 1,500, 2,000, nobody knew his name. And he entered into a covenant with God. I will never preach 
Never. Even if I'm sharing on forgiveness or marriage or I will never like without talking about the cross. This is the covenant I make with you, God. I will never. I say that's what makes the differences. I think I'm preaching to the wrong church today. You people are not understanding what I'm saying. I was, look, I've realized that it's that contract, it's that vow. I will not. I will not. You know me, I've made vows. I didn't know about this, but I've made vows. I didn't understand all these things. Now, I've even heard daddy saying, one day daddy was preaching, he said, I must have promised God something. Yeah, he said, for the ministry God has given me, I must have promised him something. He said, maybe I can't even remember, but I must have, I must have covenanted. A vow is not for a normal deal. Usually a vow is when you're in trouble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Psalm 66, 66 13. Psalm 66, we're jumping ahead of ourselves, but Psalm 66, 13. It's not for a normal day. I'm talking, that's why I say, can I change my life? You say, God, if your life stops at a certain point, you come to the altar, you say, God! And Jacob vowed a vow. I'm naked. I don't even have clothes to sleep. Mm. My brother is looking for me. I'm broke. I don't know if I'll ever return to my father's house. And Jacob vowed a vow. I'll go into the house of God with my burnt offerings. I will pay thee my vows. Mm. 14. Which my lips uttered and my mouth had spoken when I was in trouble. It's not, it's not a normal... It's not a normal day. No, no. Mose, look, you can do outreach, busting what I say. You should pay the post. It goes up to a place. The rest, and we should pay the post covenant is framed in his house. It's not a lost document. It's not. A, it's there. It's a document. It's a document, and he made his wife sign as a witness. No, you see, you say, hey, but I tell you, I'm waiting for a businessman who needs to say, God, I swear, I swear. The Bible says we shouldn't swear unless it's to, to God. I swear, today I enter into a cover. I say, that's what I say, basin, outreach, prayer. Well, when Jonah was stuck in a well, Jonah chapter 2, verse 1. Jonah chapter 2, verse 1. It's he's, he's in trouble. Jonah 2, 1. Jonah 2, 1. Listen, listen. Jonah prayed unto the Lord God out of the fish's belly. 2. And he said, I cried by reason of my affliction to the Lord. Prayer and crying doesn't change much. And he heard me. You hear you. Out of the belly, cried I. Thou heardest my voice. 3. Hello, hello, hello. Thou hast cast me. He's still in the bed. He's still in the bed. Jonah 2 9. I can't even wait. Jonah 2 9. Jonah 2 9. I'll sacrifice and I will pay you what I have vowed. Verse 10. Verse 10. Verse 10. And he vomited out Jonah. There are some problems. It's not about prayer. It's not about talking and singing and quiet time. And I said, Those are all powerful things. But I tell you, there's a place. I will pay. That's it. I will pay. That's it. I told God, if you give me a first class, <laughs> I told God, no, no, I'm not, I wasn't supposed to get a first class. I know. I even remember where I was standing. I just didn't know that God hears such things. I lifted my finger, I was walking home. If you give me a first class, everywhere I preach, I will tell them that I got a first class and I put it down to come and serve God, I promise you. And now there's nobody in the church who doesn't know. Hey, I'll tell everybody. I'll tell everybody. That's my covenant. That's the agreement I had with the Lord. Benny says one day he was in trouble. They called him IRS something, investigation something. He said, look, even to preach, his brother asked him, the, how will you preach? And he told him, watch me. So he said, he bought a ticket and went to the Wailing Wall. He said, he talked about what does he have to offer? He has already given God his life, his family. His, he doesn't have it. So he stood at the Wailing Wall and said, God, I'll give $10,000 to poor children. <laughs> if you, if you saw, you see, I said, they understand. Like, I don't have anything else. I will give $10,000. It will be for particularly poor children. He wore the yarmulke and flew to Israel and stood at the Wailing Wall to say, God, it's, it's for when you, are, when you don't have anything else to do. That's what I'm presenting you tonight. Hannah couldn't have a child. First Samuel chapter 1 verse 9. Hannah came to the temple. Eli was sitting by the post of the temple. Verse 10. And she was in bitterness of soul. And she prayed. Mm. We start with prayer. Mm -hmm. In everything. Mm -hmm. With prayer and supplication. Yes, sir. But do you think it's the first time she's yep. praying? Yep. How long, how long has she been barren for? 
How long has she been struggling to have a child for? You can go up to a point with those things. She wept sore. Prayer and crying, just like Jonah. I prayed and I cried. Put it up. Next. She vowed a vow. She vowed a vow. If you will look at my affliction and remember me and not forget me and will give me a man child, I will give him to God. You know this prayer? Let me tell you. My father, when my father was born, his father said, you look like an angel. He said, I thought you was joking. He said, oh, it looks like even a priest. Oh, I'll give him to God. You, see, you should be careful. God collected. God will yeah, yeah, yeah. In Deuteronomy, God says, be careful about the vows you make before me. Be careful. It's better in, in Ecclesiastes, it's where it says, better that you didn't even vow at all. Be careful. When you go, you don't play. There's no, to, 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 <laughs> to, to breach the contract with God, it's dangerous. It can cost you something serious. You don't play with God. Mm-hmm. Or a Roberts, his mother's neighbor was losing her child. And she was pregnant. And there was no doctor or something they couldn't get. So she told God, if you save the neighbor's child, I'll give you this one to save you. Oh, yes. I'll give you this one. Noted in heaven. I didn't know that God hears. The, the Bible said the vows you uttered. God heard it. Benny Hinn's mother the same. I give him to you. I give him to you. Your child, I give him to you. The covenant, the vow. I'm saying that I've learned. You see, see, see why not? So it will affect our relationship. I know that we are friends, but my voice is not for me. I've signed it off. Mm, may be good for my career. That's why she's still around. Right. Singers come and go. That's why she's still around. <laughs> That's why Rodney Abraham is preaching in Ghana. You see, when he came, laughing. Laughing. You may say, oh, we don't really need laughing. Can you give us more, a little more emphasis or more teaching? No, 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 no. No, 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 no. no. It's for everybody. It's for the old and the young. It's for everybody. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Because he signed. If you take, you know, he had no hope in the ministry. He had no hope. Now he ministers to Donald Trump in the White House. He had no hope. How do you get there? This does not out to you. I believe in it. I'm just saying that. that I believe in all those things, but there is a place. There is a place. I told God when I was coming to full-time ministry, I told God, I don't want to be ordinary. So I know enough revs who share three points on Sunday morning. I know, I've seen enough of that. I know enough of them. Spare me, Spare me that one. I told God. I told God. Vision, vision, vision 150, vision 200, vision 40. No. I told God, if that's what it is, then don't call me. Yeah. That's the agreement, agreement I had with God. One day I was in a train, passing through a train station. I, I, I don't want to say the name of the train station. It, it's on my tongue. I remember. My wife was asleep. I was awake. I remember seeing the station house and I made a vow. I told God. One of the vows I made God that anything he asked me for, I'll give it to you. As I'm walking here. Anything. 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 And he has, he has taken me on, on that topic a number of times. Yes, God has taken me on. The vow. And Jacob. Nobody asked Jacob. And today nobody's asking you. This is for you the rest of your life. For your destiny. This is not about today or something to be blessed with for today. No. It's a vow. And you know, you don't make a vow, um, how can I explain it? You don't make a vow like you just think of a vow. No, no, it's a very, it's a holy thing. It's a spiritual thing. No, they asked me if they should live stream. I said no. What I have to say, what I have to say, is life changing. I prefer to talk to my church. I don't know who's watching. I just, I prefer to talk to you and tell you. It's holy. It's something that the Holy Spirit, Judges eleven twenty eight. You know, unfortunately, it's, it's difficult for me because there's so many things I can say. I have to control myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 29. And the Spirit of God came upon Jephthah. The Spirit of who? Came on who? 29. 30. 30. And Jephthah vowed a vow. It's, it's the Holy Ghost. It touches you. Gee. 
There are levels to the thing. I told God, I don't want to be ordinary. Number one, mm. what chapter did we get to last week? Chapter four. <laughs> Number one, I, tell them, I don't want to be normal. I don't want to be ordinary. If you are calling me into the ministry, I don't want to be ordinary. I tell everybody who say that it's the father who is called, it's not you. So I told God, because of that, I don't, I, even, if, even if I'm okay, they will say that it's not yes. good. So I told God, please, if you are calling me, I give you my life, but my ministry cannot be ordinary. I told God, that's, I give it to you. And we agreed. I know where I was standing. That's why I said, that place is Bethel. That's why he poured oil on it. This is where we signed. This is where we agreed. And for many of you, this place is Bethel. You always remember this place. It's time to enter into a vow. God hears things. So many he says that one day, yes, he was living in uh, Jaffa, in Israel, and there was a war. Hey, go back, go back. You, go. You, are, you are blocking me. There was a war, and he, he, he wanted to come out, but because his father worked for the government in Israel, they wouldn't allow them to leave the country because they thought that he would say the secrets of Israel when he travels. So they blocked them. So he told God, a little child, if you let us get out of this war zone, to Canada, I'll buy you a bottle of olive oil. He said, within three months, they were living in Canada. So he was all happy going to school one day. Then he heard, where's my oil? <laughs> where's my oil? Yeah. You think God doesn't care about a bottle, but what you, what, what, what you commit to God? That's why Bishop Oedipo said that the church growth, it goes 5,000. There is a place it's a covenant. It's a covenant. It's based on trust. So I don't know who you are. But that's why, that's why we don't have many prosperous people. Now, right, I'm talking about vows. Now, I'm, going to, I'm about to talk to you about the, the covenant of Jacob, which is a, it's a set covenant. But first, I'm just talking, oh, sit down, sit down. I think everybody is standing, it's like we are closing. Relax. Are you blessed? You just, when he said, when he got to the, you know, as he's telling the story, he can't tell that he can't say the details. Of. He said, I got to the place on the fairway, and then he just starts speaking in tongues. Kodo do bro so far that he said that place, I didn't know anybody. Nobody ever recommended me, nobody ever chose me. He said, But I told God, this African boy, if you will take me around the world, I promise you the message and the glory and the anointing that you have put on my life, I will never change it, I will never edit it. So, you, you come, you say you want to edit it. Understand him. When he's going somewhere, tell you, these are the rules. These are the rules. These are the rules. Because I told God. I told God. Yeah, I told God. He told one pastor, I'll, I'll not go out. I'll not, like, it was time to preach. I'll not go out. Because of something, I said, I'll not go, I cannot go out. I said, Wow. Well, I said, I promised God. I signed. I signed. I told God, if you give me a first class, I'll never forget. Hey, I would tell everybody. I told God to be funny. Third class, and you came four times. It's almost like it's a, it's a <laughs> yeah. It's almost like it's a decision based on you didn't have options. But I told God just like this. I said when I'm preaching, I'll tell them I graduated the first class in law. I'll tell them every single day. I'm keeping my promise. Be careful. Now, are you blessed so far? What I'm saying does it apply to your life? Yes. Hannah vowed a vow. Job, never. I thank you, Lord. Job 22, 23. Job 22, 23. You have to be fast with the reading. Here. Now look at it. If thou return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up. Thou shalt put away iniquity far from thy tabernacles. Are you watching? 24. Then thou shalt lay up gold as the dust, and the gold of offering as the stones of the brook. Do you know what this means? To lay up gold like dust, it could have two possible meanings. It means that gold will be nothing to you, like it will be like dust. Or it could be that you actually lay up gold like the way we put trips of sand. Like Solomon used to have silver dumps outside Jerusalem. Just like trips. Like they just keep it outside because they don't do too much money. That silver was kept in dumps outside. That's what God wants to do for you. So you lay up stones like gold like dust and stones of the books. 25. The Almighty will be your defense. 
You'll be protected. You'll be covered. You know, I've come to see. When David spoke those words, Thou, O Lord, I shield. I understood it. You know, when Paul attacked the church in Acts chapter 7, the Bible says he was breathing threatenings against the church. And when they were stoning Stephen, and Stephen looked into heaven, the Bible says that's where we even see the Trinity. He was full of the Holy Ghost. And he looked into heaven and saw the Father. And then he saw Jesus. But the scripture says he was standing. But remember that if he then be risen with Christ, seek those who by where Christ sitteth. Jesus is supposed to be seated at the right hand side of God. But when they were stoning Stephen, he stood up. He stood up. I've come to me, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid, even first lovers, I'm afraid of them. Yeah, my own members. I'm afraid to shout or to tamper with. You know, people have been drinking communion and receiving blessings every Sunday. I don't, I've learned not to touch blessed people. No, I'll not even discuss a blessed person with my wife. No, 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 me, I'll not do that. I, I, I know what is my anointed. Don't touch. First lovers, every day lift your hands for a blessing. Every Sunday for the last how many years? Blessed and blessed. I don't know what has been said over their life. I'll talk about blessings on Friday. I've learned... I've learned, you are my defense. You touch, I, I don't even know that you have touched. But God is a defense. Be scared of blessed people. As soon as you touch, it starts a decline in your life, slowly. Careful. That's the almighty shall be a defense. Why did Stephen stand up? He stood up in Acts 7 because he was going to meet Paul in Acts 8 at Damascus to ask him, why are you per persecuting me? Yes, because you touched his guys, so he stood up. He's supposed to be sitting down. He stood up to walk. I declare over your life, everyone who has touched you, everyone who has attacked you, everyone who you don't even know that you are being attacked, Jesus is standing up right now, walking to go and meet them. Oh yes, in Jesus' name. The Almighty shall be your defense. And thou shalt have plenty of silver. Then you wonder where does it come from? Gold, silver, defense. Then he goes on, thou shalt decree a thing. That's how I have delight in the Almighty, and you lift up your face unto God. 27. Then you make your prayer to Him, and you hear you, then you will pay. You see, what it means is that the whole thing, it was because of a vow. So after God brings the gold and the silver and whatever, then you will pay your vow. So there's no gold and there's no silver without a vow and without a, there's no defense, there's no, all of those things were the result of a vow that has been made. That's why I say when you see somebody standing there, you don't know what agreement, what, 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 what commitment. And this is the secret of Jacob. He made a vow and a contract and a commitment. There are people who have done business with God. They've shaken God's hand. Agreed. Agreed. Ha! Huh. And I pray that you all be people who have shaken the hand of God. Doing business with the Lord. Okay. I think now we can close. And all through your life, you'll remember. You know, there's so many things I can say, so I don't know what else. To tell you, I want to just go on to the vow of Jacob. But all through Jacob's life. You know, Jacob was cheated three times. People think it's twice, but it was three times. And his wages were changed ten times. And Jacob worked for Laban for a total of 20 years. The first seven, he was never paid. He was given Leah. The second seven, he wasn't paid. He was given Rachel. The third was six years. And uh, Laban and him agreed that whatever... Is the strict cattle to give it to you? Most people think that that thing happened because he was smart. Like Jacob was intelligent and he understood animals. No. It was because of the vow that he made. Genesis 31, verse 4. If you're interested, I think I'm not, I'm going over time here. Yeah? What time are we closing? At the end. <laughs> Jacob sent and called Rachel and Leah and said, Five, I see your father's countenance that is not towards me as before. You know, you want to give us an NLT maybe? Help us to understand the things well. Hello. Friends, upstairs, help. Good. I've noticed that your father's attitude towards me has changed. But the God of my father has been with me. Verse six. You know how hard I've worked for your father. Seven. But he has cheated me Changing my wages ten times. How many times? Ten times. Cannot affect him. Your boss cannot change your life. 
Your mother cannot determine your life. That boy you broke up with, it cannot change. It can, it, it, that's not what it depends on. Oh, I wish you would believe what I'm saying. But God has not allowed him. God has not allowed him. God has not allowed. I'm telling you, your life is not determined by anyone whose power you seem to be under today. God has not allowed him. Verse 8. And he said, for if he said, the speckled animals will be your wages, the whole flock began to produce speckled. And when he changed his mind, the striped animals will be your wages, then the whole flock brought striped young. Anything he says, he changes. You see, all this, I've never, I, I thought that oh, maybe a miracle mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. God was just moving yeah. on Jacob's behalf. Or, mm -hmm. I thought it was even because of the blessing. Mm -hmm. Maybe his father had blessed him. No, no, this one is not a blessing. Verse 9. In this way, God has taken your father's animals and given all of them to me. What your boss is controlling it belongs to you. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Unless you are sitting by your boss. Verse 10. <laughs> one time during the mating season, I had a dream. Come on. This is the part I didn't know. And I saw that the male goats mating with the females were streaked, speckled, and spotted. That's how I knew that I have to select them. Next verse. Then in my dream, the angel of God said to me, Jacob! And I replied, yes, here I am. Verse 12. Look up. You will see that only the streaked, speckled, and spotted males are mating. For I've seen how Laban has treated you. I couldn't allow Laban to continue treating you. So I had to come here in a dream. 13. I am the God of I think it's for me. It makes me emotional. I couldn't allow it. I couldn't allow it. I couldn't allow it. I'm the God of Bethel. The place where you poured that oil. And the place where you made your vow. The God. I'll never allow them to cheat you. We signed. Beautiful. We signed. I told you I'll keep you. Yes. I told you I'll put clothes on your back. Yes. I told you I'll give you food to eat. Yes. And I told you I'll bring you back to your father's house. Yes. I'm that God. And I'll not allow anyone to teach you because we signed. Careful. Careful. I'm the God of Bethel. I'm the God of Bethel. Your life is changing. Amen. Can my life change? Yeah, Tommy. His life changed there. His life changed at that place in that desert. When he knelt down alone and he told God, if, if you will be with me. You know, let's go to the vow of Jacob. I feel so blessed. My soul. You know, God told me to tell you this. And I'm telling you, I'm going home. Genesis 28. If the Lord uh -huh, uh -huh. if the Lord God will be with me number one the presence of God this is the vow of Jacob like this one you see sometimes when, when you are buying property okay when I'm buying property for the church when the, the church is purchasing we already have like when we bought this land this is the contract we did when we bought this land we just reuse the contract and change the names because it's already a legally solid working uh, uh, agreement are you with me change figures change names and use it and so this contract is already approved in heaven so tonight, tonight, I'm calling some people out. No, this is not for everybody. People who, like Jephthah, the spirit comes upon you. You know, do you know Jephthah's vow? I didn't even get to tell you. He's going to war. If God makes him win the war, when he comes out, whatever comes out to meet him, I'll give it to you. And when he came, his daughter came to meet him. Yeah. Be careful, though. You know, don't talk about her. You should have said, I'll give you tomatoes. Just say something else. <laughs> don't, 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 don't. <laughs> If my God will be with me. Huh, what do you do for a living? You're a pastor. What do you do? You're a pastor. What do you do? You're a pastor. What do you do? Huh? You're a student. Yes. If he'll be with you as a student. You people are all pastors. You, are, you do what? Software something. Huh? What? Software engineering. If he'll be with you in that software engineering. You do what? Medical doctor. Medical student. If he'll be with you in that. You, you do what? Huh? HR. You say HR. What does HR look like when God is with you? What does it look like? And I know this thing. Eh? Me, I ask God if you, I, one of my covenants, I can never tell you. It's too holy. But one of them is if you'll be with me. I told God, I can't tell you. I can't tell you. If you'll be with me. Number two, if you keep me, mm. Frank, for you to get to 75 and nothing happened. 
Nothing happened to you. <laughs> you may think that it's because of strength no. or wisdom no. or who you met. No. But not knowing Mosaic, people have contracts at home in their drawers. If you keep me. Number, number three, you give me bread to eat. Oh, put up my scripture, please. What are you doing? You give me bread. It's prosperity and clothes to wear. You see, that's what I'm saying. That most people, first of all, it's not, it's not easy to prosper. It's not that the church doesn't have rich people. Charlie, the, the, the country doesn't have rich people. It's not easy. It's not easy here. But some people say, it's, you know, one day I laid hands on somebody here. The Holy Spirit came on me. I even started, there were tears in my eyes. I said, even if you sell water, you'll be rich. I said, sachet water. Even if you sell sachet, if that's your business, you'll be rich. He has even left the church. Oh, well, I hope he has it. I pray every day that he has it. Yeah, one, recently, I met him. He, told, he reminded me of that prayer. That he's working. Yes, yes, yes. Because I'll tell you about that when I talk about the blessing tomorrow. You can't take the blessing. When Esau came to us, he said, oh, let's reverse it. No, no, no. I've made him your master. A blessing makes you a master. Okay, I don't want to go into tomorrow's preaching. If you are interested, come tomorrow. What was I saying? For you to stay as a pastor, 89, for you to pass at 94, Oh yes. that you are just closing, and when they lay you in a coffin, God has kept you. The evils that are in this world, for you to start a business now that you can live for your children in 48 years. For God to keep, keep, preservation. It's not a small thing. That's what he asked God for. These are the things. And today I want to ask you, this is the covenant of prosperity. There are some people here, God is going to give you something. He's going to entrust something with you. That, I, I, I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to talk about that. But God is going to entrust, I'm not talking about pastors here. Talking about, talking about wealth. God told me, I was going to give a certain level of wealth. He told me to a number of people in my church, a number of people. That's why we had this service. Tomorrow and Friday are powerful services. But today, this is what he told me to say to you. He's going to put something in your hand. Arel. But it's based on a covenant. That's what Paul says. I thank my God that he enabled. See, a lot of life is whether you be enabled. He enabled me. Why did he enable me? Because he counted me faithful. He thought that I'll keep, I'll keep it. I'll keep the control. So, now, what are, what are Jacob's vows? Then number 21, he said, And if you will bring me again to my father's house in peace. Because he's run away from his father's house. So, you know, you know, okay, I have to move on. Okay, I have to move on. But you, you remember that special verse in Genesis 32, when he says, I left here with a stick. I left here with a stick. You know, recently I was in London. In the middle of the night, I went to the place where I made a vow to God. That if you if don't make my ministry normal and ordinary, before I climbed onto an underground train for one hour to make my way here to Ghana. And I remembered the feeling of depression. The hopelessness as a pastor. And I recognized that in the year 2023, I left, I left that place with nothing. That's what he said. And now I've become two bands. God is faithful. God is faithful. God doesn't change. Whatever he says he'll do, that's what he'll do. Oh, yes. And I'm telling you. Jacob said, number one, the Lord will be my God. You see, this may look simple, but most Christians have another God. Most of you have another God. Most of you have something else that's important to you. 
I understand God. I understand even me. If I have money and I need somebody to keep it, I will not choose you. I will not choose you. I understand God. I understand the ministry. Why he will not entrust. Do you know in Billy Graham's death, he is the most profitable religious institution in America. In his death, Billy Graham and Evangelistic Society at the Samaritan Space. Billions of dollars every year. God doesn't just give ministry away. Because in your heart, what controls you? Look at your marriage. Look at how you behave in your marriage. Oh, because I felt, because of my emotions, because you are not, God is not your God. If we don't put you in a bus, no church. I don't pray. I don't read my Bible. I don't, you see, it's different to fall into sin than to walk in sin. They are a little different. This is the covenant of Jacob. God will be my God. Don't worship anything else. I don't care. I don't care what is new and what is fashionable. God is my God. Number two. This pillar is the house of God. You see, Paul, what I like is he said, this particular pillar. Where I met God, this one. is the house of God. There are two blessings there. The first one is this one. Where I met you, Lord, I commit. Maybe in the future, Bethel will become a dirty place. But this is the house of God. Maybe in the future, there will be nicer uh, places in Padaran and Mamre and Gerard where you met Abraham and Isaac. But this is this first love church where I met God. I covenant mm. with God that here, whether it's good, bad, dirty, clean, I, I get so surprised. Somebody says, I'm, I'm leaving the church. It really surprises me. It's one of the things that really shocks me. Not because you are leaving. People leave things. That's fine. But why were you here in the first place? What delusion did you have that is now gone? What did you think of the church that now you've realized is not true? Whatever that delusion was, is definitely not a commitment to God. It's the church that God has brought me to. This person... His behavior may make me want to leave, especially him. <laughs> what will I do? This one's behavior may make me feel like going away. God forbid. God forbid. I do. This one. Mm. <laughs> but I vowed a vow. Vowed a vow. How you deal with God's house. As of me, I know that God is going to prosper. God is not involved in your business. You don't go to church. He's not involved in what you are doing. Unless somebody forces you onto a bus, you don't go to church. I spit on your commitment. You wavering, empty. Just leave it before I call. I sin. You empty man. Oh, pastor, come and bless my business. We call him alam. You know, there's zero commitment. God is not involved in what you are doing. It's not a part of what you are doing. This pillar, Paul, that's what blessed me. This place, it should be the house of God. I'm talking about lifelong commitment. So, that's, that's, this is the contract of Jacob. Yeah, I've made this commitment to God. This is my church. Go up and not because the church is good, but because I've committed to God. The church can choose what it wants to be. I can't control them. We are the church, so obviously it won't be good. <laughs> Number three, what I'm saying, I think maybe it's above, it's a bit too deep. Num oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Let's go to Matthew. Matthew 27. 57. Matthew 27, 57. When evening was come, there was a what? A rich man. A what? Man. Of arithmetic named arithmetic. I can never pronounce this thing. Arithmetic. <laughs> it's like arithmetic. 
Arimathea, named Joseph, also a disciple. But there are disciples who don't have money. And then there are disciples who have money. Um, today, I'm, I want to talk to you. Okay, let's set aside pastoral work. Let's talk about money. I want to talk to rich disciples. Are there any rich, ma- prosperous disciples? Good. Please, please pay attention because I'm addressing you directly. Next verse. Put it up. He said, I beg for what? That's the church. The church is the body of Christ. And the rich man said, I beg, I cannot go on out. You will never see him. They are sending him two and two. You will never see him going down into Samaria to preach Christ. You will never see him going to start a church in Ephesus or going to solve a problem with Titus in Crete. But he says, I beg you, I can't preach, but leave me the body of Jesus. Oh, Shada, dear sir. Follow Dobro Sima Nande say. The dead boy, I know he's wounded. I know it doesn't have the Holy Spirit because it's the Spirit that raised Christ from the dead. I know that the church may be backslidden and dirty, but I beg you, this is a rich man. This is a rich man. I beg you, leave me the body. I beg you, leave me the body. It has holes in it, but leave me the body. It's distorted and smelly. Leave me. Please. Leave the body with me. It's my privilege. Can I wipe the steps? If I'll get, please, I'll park my G wagon. But can I touch the body? Can I clean? Can I help? There's no commitment. I say, look, I've seen it too many times. There's no commitment to God's house and to God. It's all superficial because you belong to a friend group. It's because they do welfare in your ministry. They'll find something small for you. The day stops. Oh. Please, has it not happened? You stop the welfare, the people stop coming. Oh, please. Oh, the church people are paying my school fees. Where are all those we started with? Where are all the people? This year, I'm going to award my pastors who have been pastors without ever being removed for 10 years. I'm going to give all of them a certificate of survival. Oh, yes. For surviving, I want to shake your hand and say, well done. For 10 years, 2013. There's a certificate of survival. We made it. We survived. We are still here for after 10 years. Where are they? I knew people who used to come to me and say, Oh, Pastor Joshua, what a powerful word. What a... Where are they? Can't even get enough access to even usher the place. Can't even get people to come early and clean because everything is, I'm tired. I don't know if I can fit it into my schedule. I don't know. You will not have a certain level. A certain level. I'm telling you, there's a certain... When God steps into your business, your life, your career, your marriage, your work is different. God was with Joseph. He was a prosperous man. I beg the body. Leave me the body. Leave me the body. I think I have preached to myself in my house. I'm usually blessed at home. Yeah. <laughs> Leave me. I like those words. He begged. He begged. Put it up. He begged the body. Can I wipe the marble? I said, Joshua, I noticed that the speakers, some have stopped working. Please, how much is one? Can I pay for one? Right now, I don't have much. I'm a shoemaker. The body, can you give it to me, please? Pastor, please, I saw that the steps are dirty. Is there a ministry for wipers? I think I can start one. I have one member, me. I like to wipe every Sunday. Every morning I'll be here. I'll never be late, God. I beg for the body of Jesus. Can I look after it? Can you give it to me? I'm sure Pilate was saying, what do you do with the body? How does it help you? This pillar. Look, look. At, I beg, he begged the body, 58, 59. He begged the body, 59. And when Joseph took the body, he wrapped it. Jesus, broken body, twisted, uh, lifeless, backslidden, dirty, whatever bad words you have. I beg the body. I wish I had businessmen like this. I don't. I don't. You can't get ashes to come here early. For who? You can't get them to stay late. I say, that's what I say. If they are doing it because they like me, me, Joshua, they like me, and you don't want me to be angry, so they'll do it. But it's not for God. It's covenant. Covenant is different. 
feel like I'm, I'm going even over time. Verse, verse 60. Verse 60. And he laid it in his own tomb, mm. which he had hewn out in the rock. Mm. Did you put it? In mm. his own tomb. Mm. To fulfill the prophecy in Isaiah 53 that he made his grave with the rich. Uh, put it in there. When I started the town church here, when we started the town church here, at the point I paid for the canopies myself every week. When I started my church in Belgium, I bought all the equipment. Then they spoiled it and I bought it again. I've paid so many things for the church. Even here, I know a few people in this church who give more than me to this church. No, they struggle to find. I beg for the body. I value his body, his church. Value it. You don't value it. Can't even get you to come. You are even sleeping, like us and preacher are sleeping. That's why I say, I'm, God told me he wants to walk some people into a certain level, Harrell, do you see? Like a certain realm. Hush. It takes, it takes a covenant. It takes a vow. Please take your seats. Number three. I promised, I promised the service organizer that I'll close by nine and it's now 9.35 obviously I started at what 8.15 so I was hoping to do 45 minutes but now I've done one hour 20 minutes I'm changing I'm closing number three he said you don't deserve this he said this is the covenant of tithing. Of all, leave the verse up, please. Of all, of how much? If you ask me to mention a number of tithers, I'll say there are no more than 25. If you ask me, I'll say there are no more than 25 tithers here. Because most people give off some. Take it from me. You see, now we are not dealing with men who. Whether people see you coming to pay tithe or not, that, that, forget about that. Now we are dealing with covenants. I want you to write these three. The Lord will be my God. This pillar is the house of God. And of all, Abraham paid tithe in Melchizedek. Isaac paid tithe. When we look at the Talmud, Isaac was a tithe payer. But not Jacob. He has heard teachings on tithing before. A lot of people have talked about tithing. I'm sure even occasionally they were paying, killing some goats, maybe added some, <laughs> something small. But that day, something happened. He saw an open heaven. Do you remember in Malachi 3 verse 10, he says, bring the tithes, okay? Look at it. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse that they will meet in my house and put me now here with. If I will not open window. See, people who don't pay tithe have not lived. They don't know what open heaven is. So they hear other people teaching on it and talking about it and explaining it. But the day Jacob had a dream and saw what is it like to live, what is it like to live under a heaven that is open. Most people here don't know that experience. So when he woke up, he put his hand in his pocket. Nobody brought up tithing. There's no tithe in the conversation. He put his hand in his pocket and said, from today, Everything you give me, I'll give you a turn. Until you experience what is an open heaven. I know. I know. I know what it's like to live under. I've lived under an open heaven. I know. I know what it's like for the heavens to be open over your head. I've lived it. Nobody has to teach me. You know, people say that uh, tithing... Um, it's Old Testament, Moses' law, isn't it? I agree. Okay. I agree with you. So they said hey, the law is done away in Jesus. Okay. This is not a law. This is a contract. This is not a law. Nobody is forcing you. You won't go to hell if you don't pay tithe. It's okay. Don't pay. It's all right. Nobody is forcing you. Nobody was forcing Jacob. But the day you learn what it is like to be a seamstress and the sky is open over you to be a doctor and the sky is open over you to be a house husband a house husband who has the skies oh I 
know what it's like to be a pastor with a sky over your head? When I'm paying my tithe, a roundup. I know what it's like to not have a salary and be eating, buying fuel, driving, cutting my hair, spreading my beloved. I don't know what will come next month. I understand. I understand. I've seen. I've seen. When you see, put your hand in your pocket. Uh, immediately. When you woke up, okay. I mean, I, I can just imagine when you woke up. Hey, God, I didn't understand that thing. Abraham didn't say it well. I didn't get it when Isaac was explaining it. But when you showed me, I pray God will show you. I pray God will reveal to you what is life like when it changes and the heavens are open over your head. What does it look like? That thou would just rend the heavens and step down. What does it look like? What does it look like for your family? What does it look like for your children? You covenant. You come to the altar of God. You say, God, for the rest of my life, I'm 22 years old. I make this covenant with you. Of all that you ever give me, whatever you give me, whether it's one or one million of everything, I covenant. Lord, I've been tithing in a certain way in the past. They preached it in the church. Everyone was doing it, so I did it. But today, I sign on the dotted line. I say, of all that you give me. That's different. Okay, it's nice and long. Okay. Christ has fulfilled it. Okay. Okay, I accept. But uh, if you want to test whether God is real, don't use healing. If this cripple doesn't work, God is not real. He may be hurt. <laughs> we don't use raising the dead. If we pray, he doesn't wake up. Jesus is not alive. Take your time. You may wound yourself. I'm going to propose. If she doesn't say yes, then God is not on the throne. Take your time. You may make a mistake. But in Malachi 3, 10, he says, if you want to test me, if you want to prove me, if you want to test whether God is real, you, you, you prove me in this place. You, you bring the tithe. I always tell people, tithe, strictly, strictly, everything you get off all. Tithe for three months. I tell me your life didn't change. I'll quit the church with you. Tell me your finances didn't change. Me and you will leave the church together. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Covenant. No, sit down. I'm ending. Something heavenly. You know? Yesterday, the Lord showed me something about altars. In Genesis 35, I think verse 7 somewhere, it says, God told Jacob, go back to Bethel and build an altar there. Yeah. Earlier on, he said, go back to Bethel and build an altar there. The place where you make a vow, something must die there. In the realm of the spirit, there are altars. Geographic locations where things died. Throughout Abraham's life, there were altars. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. There's a pedestrian crossing in East London. One day I'll take you there. If you could see in the realm of the spirit, there's a round base, rocks coming up, and it gets smaller as it comes up. And on the top, there's some wood, something's burning. And you see, sacrifice causes smells. In the realm of the spirit, behind here, behind the church on Revival Street, there's another altar. These are my altars. These are my altars. Where I made a sacrifice that you see, there are sacrifices that slightly inconvenience you. There are sacrifices where you feel dead inside. Yeah. Those are altars. And an altar is built at the place of the covenant. 
And today, I want to invite some of you to build an altar here of a certain offering that you see, when Noah built an altar, I think it's Genesis 8, the Bible says that when he built the altar and he made the sacrifice, there was a smell. God smells certain. That's what I say. In my life, there are smoky places at different places where things have died. Even recently, recently, I, 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 I did something. Yeah. For God. If you don't have that kabu, something, you don't enter into something with God. I'm just saying, this is just something God showed me yesterday. And the Lord smelled a sweet savor. If you look at Philippians chapter 4, the Bible says, I've received your gift from Epaphroditus, and it's a sweet smelling savor. If you check Acts chapter 10, the Lord told Cornelius that your arms have come up as incense. So there are certain offerings that attract God's attention. And tonight I'm going to invite us to make some covenants and some vows with God. It's between you and God. I don't really need to know. But before that, I want to take an altar offering. You know, my friend, Jonathan Shuttlesworth, he told me a story and then he showed me a video. You see, he, he went to Rodney Hart Brown's church. I was sitting in front. He said it was 2016, I think. He didn't even have a ministry. He had nothing. And he was to say he's called to be an evangelist. He was sitting in front just like this. And the song they were singing was, um, Something happens. Jesus. Something. Something happens. Uh, yeah, supernatural. You know it. You don't know it. About your name. I don't know it. Jesus. Shall they sing first? Something happens. Yeah, that song. He said, he told me himself what he was seeing on stage, the ministry. He said he wanted it with everything in him. And he wanted to sow a seed, but he didn't have anything. He didn't have. So he, he went to the front of the church. He took off his suit, his tie, his shirt, his belt. He said the trousers he wanted to remove it by the church people. So after church, he went to add the trousers. He said that they had to go and buy shorts from Walmart and slippers to go home. Then he took his watch. Then he took his phone. Then he emptied his account. Then he, he emptied his account and broke his credit card. And he left everything there that day. 2016. But telling me just a few weeks ago. Oh, yeah. I spoke to him on the phone. He said today that their ministry's property alone is over $10 million. He said he just sold a seed to Rodney Brown of $1 million, his first $1 million seed. Oh, yes. There's some giving. That's, I, I want you to understand. I'm not taking, I'll take a normal offering proper, properly. That's different. But I want to take, I need some envelopes, by the way. I want to take, I don't know how many I have. I, I just want to take an offering. Just give me something. It's okay. Today is a holy day. Can you, those of you who are a little sensitive, can you, can you see that God is speaking to you good? And I want to receive an offering of 10,000 Ghana cities as an altar on the day that you make a covenant with God. So I want to ask some people to come and give 10,000 Ghana cities. I'm closing I'm ending. 10,000 Ghana cities. Stand here. 10,000 Ghana cities. I know it's not a normal offering. I'm talking about something else that causes a problem. Something that affects you. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I mean, something that is not, it's not an ordinary. It's going to affect how your life is. That's what I'm looking for. 10,000 Ghana cities. Come. And I need it tomorrow. Bring it to the altar tomorrow. If you, if you, you can't, you're not part of this. Something, he says, smoke. God told me, God told me he's going to raise dollar multi millionaires in this same chair. He said, People I know already. He told me, whispered it to me. Come.
come, come, come. I'm waiting for you. 10,000. Don't um, come if you feel under pressure or. And you don't come because of me. Don't come because you feel maybe I'm raising off you want to help me. No, no. I'm not raising money. There's no financial stress here. There's no. We have paid all our bills. We, everything is paid for. We are above. Our credit is healthy. That's not, that's not what's going on here. 10,000 Ghana cities. Here you go. Make your vow to the Lord while you're here. God bless you. 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 Make your vow. Make your vow. No, no. I need more envelopes. You should be praying. Those of you in front, you should be praying. Jesus Dion name above all names beautiful savior glorious Lord I need ashes Emmanuel God is with us blessed redeemer make your vow those of you in front make your vow make your vow ask him what you want him to do let the Holy Spirit lead you so Lord if you do this for me this is my commitment for the rest of my life it's a holy moment Beautiful Savior, make your vow. Glorious Lord, Emmanuel, ah, God is with us. Blessed Redeemer. Emmanuel, God is with us. Oh, no, no, see, I don't know. I don't make your vow, make your vow. Blessed Redeemer, make your vow, Lord, for the rest of my life. Lord, if you do this for me, for the rest of my life, make your vow. Jesus, name above all. extreme side and on that extreme side God is it's not really about amounts I'm just trying to get a number that breaks you and affects you blessed redeemer living word for you are glory Come this way. Come this way. And uh, make your vow. Make your vow. Make your vow. We lift our voice and pray. You're the land. Make your vow. Make your vow.
Thank you, Father. We lift our voice in praise. The Bible says, don't be hasty to utter a thing before the Lord. Take your time. Vow to Him. Today is a day you'll never forget. Doing business with God. Doing business with God. Doing business with God. Doing business with God. And worthy to be praised. Make your vow. Make your vow. You're the Lamb. Make your vow. Make your vow. Upon. Woo! 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm. Make your vow. To you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your power. You're the Lamb. If you do this one thing for me, Lord. And Jacob vowed about it. And Jacob vowed about it. Anointing. Jerome, sing for me. Please be attentive, please. Please be attentive, please. Make your vow. Fall on me. Fall on me. Fall on It is done. It is done. It is done. Agreed. 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 God bless you. Ten thousand lift your hands. Ten thousand lift your hands. Father, thank you. Thank you, it is done. Shh, thank you, it is done. Thank you, you have heard in heaven. In Jesus' name. Whew. 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 It is done in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. 10,000, God bless you. You can take your seats. 5,000, lift your hands. Thank you, Lord. Forever, oh Lord, your word is settled in heaven. And Jacob vowed a vow. And Jacob vowed a vow before God in his house when I was in trouble. Father, we thank you for what you have done. In Jesus' name. Amen. Please go back to your seats. Psalm 132 verse 1. People come. Let me pray for you. Psalm 132 verse 1. Lord, remember David. And all his afflictions. <sighs> How he swore unto God and vowed unto the mighty God of Jacob. You see, Jacob is known as the God, the one who vowed to God. All right, next verse. Surely I will not come into the tabernacle of my house. This is the vow of, of David. Nor go up into my bed. I will not give sleep to my eyes or slumber to my eyelids. Until I find out a place for the Lord and habitation for the mighty God of Jacob. Six. Lo, we have heard of it at Ephrata. That was the location of the vow. We found it. Some of you say, remember the vow I made. What's today's date? On the 26th of April, 2023, at 9.50 something. 9.57. I told God, we found it in the fields of the wood. Now jump to verse 11. The Lord has sworn, this was God's side, God's response to David. He will not turn from it. Of the fruit of your body, I will set you on the throne. Verse 12. And if thy children keep my covenant and my testimony that I teach them, their children shall also sit upon thy throne forever. This is God's response. You build a house for me, you'll be on the throne forever. That was the agreement between him and God. Fall on me. Oh, the God is touching me already. Blessed. 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 In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, my dear. The Lord has heard. Do you, do, you, do, you, do you know what Ishmael means? Ishmael means the Lord has heard it. He has heard you. 
In Jesus' name. That's heard you. Ishmael. Shall I call his name Ishmael? For the Lord has heard you. Ishmael. God has heard it. Somebody's life is changing tonight. I know it. 2,000 cities. Come. Listen, listen, no, listen. Before you come, listen. 10,000, 5,000, 2,000. The same envelope I gave you. I'm not taking my mobile money. Cash. Because tomorrow I'm going to lead you to pray and place it on the altar. This is the vow I make to God. I want you to put it on God's house on the steps. And the Lord has heard it. So I need it tomorrow. 10,000 Ghana cities. By the way, we don't need money. Remember, I've sometimes come and told you that we have to pay for something, so help me to pay for whatever. Once, I think once or twice I've done that since we started. But today, we are richer than we have ever been. You get it? That's not the discussion here today. I feel that God has specially selected the First Love Church and he wants to raise people up here. In, in the ministry, some people have made some vows about the ministry today that you will see within the next 10 years. God will be faithful. So, 2,000 cities come. Pastors, I think I'll give it all myself. Just let me have some more envelopes in case. Because I touch my hands. Touch my hands. My heart and my mind. If you go see in the realm of the spirit, eh, there are stones here. There are stones here, if you can see. People have left, <laughs> people have left rocks here, all over. Here's where it died. And you know, in Genesis 8, when Noah made that sacrifice, he accepted that that species would be discontinued. Whatever animal, there were only two. Whatever he killed, he accepted that I will not have it again. That's what I said. I wish I could show you that video. Jonathan shot to show. He took off his shoot, his like, there's a certain giving. It's different from an offering that it will affect me financially to do something. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about giving something that hurts you. And I said, oh, there's a pedestrian crossing. God asked me for something. I gave it to him on, in the middle of the road. I took my phone out and I sent it to him. And sent my account to very near zero. Decimal points from zero. That's the day, one of the days. One of the days. I don't know. Today, has my preaching made sense today? Like, have I, have I spoken? Has God spoken to you? Have, has, has it gone through? I'm not so sure. Are you sure? Okay. I hope so. Feel my life, Lord. Come on, girl. Ah, is there such a presence here? Such a presence. Look, the glory of the Lord is all over you, my friend. It's all over you. Oh, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Ah, God is so kind. God is so kind. Bring it back, bring it back. Oh, Holy my dear. God bless. It's all over you. Feel my life. Feel my life, Lord. Make your vow. Make your vow. Now, I will take a normal offering, but the last of this, this, this particular altar, I want 1,000 cities to come here. After that, I'll take the normal offering. I want you to also, the presence of God is here. You'll be blessed. But for the last, an altar, 1,000 from here going. Touch. Touch my hands, my mouth. Down straight, all the way. We have a long enough to feel my life. Make your bow. You can sing, you can talk, you can dance, you can whatever it is, but before him today, make your vow. And Jacob vowed a vow. And Jacob vowed a vow. Jacob vowed a vow and Hannah vowed a vow and, and Jonah said I will pay I will pay my vows I will pay my vows I will pay my vow I vow to you now shh, listen 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 
There are some people here who have to give your life. Your life. I'm not talking about people who are already in the ministry or in Bible school, already heading there. I'm talking about there are some people here today. Your, your covenant is your life. The Holy Spirit just told me, your covenant is to give your life. That was my covenant. Gee, I told God, I give my life. No problem. But this normal, <laughs> and I must say, it's not been ordinary. If I, I have to be honest. It's not been normal. It's not been ordinary. I mean, maybe it's not been impressive, but it's also not been ordinary. It's not been. I don't have dry points. I, I don't, I don't. It's not been like that so far by the, by the mercies of God. It's kept his part. Oh, no, no, no. This type of you lay hands and there's no power. No, no, no. No presence. Nothing, nothing special. Vision 60 for five years. No, 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 no. I told God, I'll give you my life. But you too. <laughs> yes. One day I told God. I was in Germany. I told God. I can't tell you. I can't even tell you. It's too holy. Every time I want to say, I can't say it. It's holy. The covenant. And Jacob vowed a vow. The art of following Jacob. The art of making a covenant before the Lord. Oh. I feel the anointing. 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 Wow, wow, wow. I feel the power of God. I feel the power of God. I feel the power of God. Oh, that evil samba never ever simba davis. Thank you, Lord. Anointing fall. Come on. All instruments, all singers. Come on, anointing fall. Congregation, just lift your hands. Congregation, lift your hands where you're sitting. Everybody, lift your hands. Commit your life to the Lord. the same. Feel 
this place surround me let me know you're near Lord this is what it's like to do business with God my dear it's real he's responding and he's telling you it's real oh Lord surround it's difficult when you're not there Lord it's hard when you're not there Lord and let your presence feel feel this place it's difficult when you're not there Lord we go through the motions Lord we do everything Lord but it's difficult when you're not there. Surround me. Oh, Lord. I ask you, Lord, surround. Surround my business. Surround my ministry. Surround my church. Surround my marriage. Surround my family. Surround me, Jesus. I want to know you're close. Surround. Bring the baby. Bring the baby. Oh, Lord. Thank you for your blessing. Thank you for your blessing, Jesus. Thank you for your blessing. Surround me. Never be ordinary. It's difficult when you're not there, God. It's difficult. Life is hard when you're not there, Lord. And let your presence feel surround me. Surround me, Jesus. Surround me, Jesus. Surround me. Oh, Lord. Please surround my left hand side and my right hand side let me feel oh Lord and let your presence feel this place let your presence feel this place want to know that you're close let your presence it gets easier when you are there, Lord. It's faster when you are there, Lord. Today we covenant with you, Lord, and let your presence, if the Lord will be with me, and keep me in the way that I go, and give me bread to eat and raiment to put on, and bring me back to my Father's house in peace, then the Lord will be my God. And this pillar, this place, the gate of heaven, the house of God. Let your presence fill this place. Let your presence fill this place. And Jacob vowed a vow. Let your presence fill this place. You are the love of my life you are the hope that I cling to you mean more than this world to me wouldn't trade you silver or gold Oh. It's a transfer. It's a transfer. It has to finish. It's a transfer. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh. You are my everything. I couldn't take one step without you. I could never go on. I need envelopes. I 
I couldn't live one day without you because I don't have the strength to make it on my own you are the love of my life you are the hope that I cling to you mean you mean more than this whole world Lord more than this world to me wouldn't trade you for silver or gold I wouldn't trade you for riches at all you are you are my every surround Sounds like to do business with him. He fills your heart. Surround me. Oh Lord, this is what I hear him saying. He's surrounding you, my dear. He'll do it. And the Lord heard it. Surround me, oh Lord. Let your presence feel. Let your presence feel this place. Let your presence feel this place. Let your presence, and the Lord heard it, feel this place. God sees, eh? Let your presence feel. You are the love of my life <laughs> you are the hope the hope the hope pick her up pick her up pick her up, pick her up. you mean more than this world to me he loves you huh he told me to tell you he loves you Yes, yes, yes. I wouldn't exchange you, Lord. If I had the chance, I wouldn't exchange you, Lord. For riches, riches untold. You are, stand in your place, says the Lord. You are my everything. I wouldn't trade you for silver or gold. No, 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 Lord. I wouldn't trade you. And Jacob vowed a vow. I feel it so strongly here. Riches untold. The place you are. The place of the vow. I am El Bethel. The God of Bethel. The place where you made a vow. I am El Bethel. I am El Bethel. You're free. You find it for me. I'm El Bethel. I'm El Bethel. I'm El Bethel. Find it. Yeah, El Bethel. God of Bethel. Oh, the God of the presence. The God of the house of God. The God of the vow. It was the vow. It was the place of the vow. It was the place of the vow. Make your vow, eh? Make your vow before God. Oh, Dada Vosani Sambodagis. Are, you are my end. He's done it. Hey, there are many contracts here today. You may never know what is going on. Lift your hands, everybody in front. Lift your hands. Father, you who see in heaven, you who know all things. The God of Bethel. Hear these prayers and these vows that they make to you today. And answer from heaven. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. You can go back to your seats. You mean... Apple stars with baskets very quickly. Apple stars with baskets. I have to do something before we close. Apple stars very quickly, please. Are they here? We don't have some today. They are here? I can't see them. You are. I feel it, Lord. I feel it. I feel your power. Come this way. There's no one here. Oh, they are coming. There's nobody in the middle. Hello. Oh, they are coming. They are keeping long. Now, I'm taking an offering tonight of only 100 cities. I'm not taking any other offering today. Tomorrow I'll take other offerings, but today I'm only taking 100 Ghana cities. What I did before, that's not an offering. That's between you and God. 100. There's a hum, and you've got to fix it. You've got to fix it now. It's really disturbing me. Sound people, there's a hum here. You've got to fix it. Now, let me pray. Father, let your holy presence that fills this place. Bless every seed of 100 cities tonight. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Details on the screen. Quickly, quietly. Don't not too much noise. The presence of God is here. Be sensitive. 100 cities. That's all I'm taking today. There's no other offering. No booster. No other number. Tomorrow I take a normal offering. Today is a little holy. So 100 kind of cities. Come. You are... The hope that I cling to. Come. Come. Thank you for mercy, Lord. Thank you for mercy. Yes. 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 Yes, Lord. about the encounter with God. The art of following Jacob is the art of having a personal encounter with God. Uh, tomorrow I'm going to lead you to make the vow of Jacob. Three things. The Lord is my God. I'll never follow anyone apart from God, including a pastor. I follow God. God is my God. God is the one I serve. God is the one I worship for the rest of my life. Number two, this pillar, this place where we are standing here, this place, to the day I die, I will never say this is not my church. I never say I don't attend this. If, if, that's what I say. It's for church members. That's why I didn't want to live stream. And number three, of all that you give me, you see, I know you've tithed before. But we are coming here to make a covenant of tithing, which is different from the law or the teaching. It's a contract. And it's not for everybody. If you're not ready, don't, don't, don't make that. Don't make. Take, the Bible says, be careful to utter anything. And no, don't be hasty to utter a thing before God in his house. I wish they would help me to find it. They don't be don't be fast, don't be hasty to utter something because God is in heaven and we are on earth. So let your words be few. I wish you help us. So I'm just letting you know tomorrow I'm going to lead you to make. Do you know why I'm not leading you to do that now? The Spirit of God came on Jeff, Japheth, Jephthah, sorry, and he made a vow. 
It's not something you just do suddenly. No, that's why I told them, take your time, make your vow. And tomorrow, seal your vow. Bring your envelope. You can even write your vow and sign. And come and place it on the altar. It's a spiritual thing. Between you and God, I don't need to know. You don't need to see me after church and tell me this is the vow I made. I don't want to know about that. That's between you and God. You say it later on when you feel led to. Now, it was that vow that I made. And it's cash. I want to take cash because it's spiritual. I want you to come and place it on the altar. We don't usually like cash. Usually we prefer transfer so that nobody can steal. But tomorrow, I want you to bring your envelope. Even if it's 10,000, find a way to put it in an envelope or two and come and bring it to put it on the altar. And then I'm going to lead everyone else who wants to make the covenant that Jacob made. These three things. And you're also asking God to do the other four. Number one, be with me. Hi. The Lord was with Joseph. He was a prosperous man. For thou art with him, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. For God was with him. There are, there are, there are so many key. Jesus Christ, Acts 10 38, for God was with him. Psalm 23, for thou art with me. If the Lord will be with me. And that's what Jacob said. Eh? So you changed my wages 10 times, but the Lord was with me. He'll be with you. You see, you'll notice it from the next day. He has started his part. Jonah was in the belly of a whale. Oh God, oh God. When he said, I'll pay my vow. The, the, the fish vomited him out. There's, there's a limit to what we can do by organizing. The point we enter into a covenant with God. And one day you'll be emotional, eh? Tell me one day you walk here and you get emotional when you stand there. You say, This was the place. Understand, eh? I've been to the place where I made number 48 Saltwell Street. It's a holy place for me. When I stand there, I feel emotional. There's nothing to walk well, right home about. There's a small corner. It's quite dirty. At that place, I recently went there in the middle of the night. The place where I I, I signed with God. He has been faithful. I left with one stick like this. That's how Jacob left his father's house. And when he was returned, he had two bands, like two armies. You will return to the Lord increased and blessed. And you will say, your testimony will be this. He's faithful. The Bible says that God is faithful, keeping his covenant. Keeping his covenant. God is faithful in the covenant. Out of following Jacob. And Jacob vowed a vow. So that's what's going to happen tomorrow. And the apostles, thank you. God bless you. And um, I know that God is going to bless you. I know that God is going to bless you. So, that's what I have to say. Tomorrow I'll talk to you about the personal encounter. <laughs> if you are interested. Yeah. I feel free in my spirit, you know. He told me to tell you, I feel so free. He told me to say that I feel free if I can sleep. Yeah. I almost called the service Jacob service. I didn't know. I knew that this was what I have to tell you. But I didn't know what name to call. So I just, oh, I feel so free in my spirit. I can't sleep tonight. I'm going home with my wife. Go home, bless. You see this thing? It's called the presence of God. It was one of my vows, one of our agreements. That dryness. You know that atmosphere. You are preaching, it's like there's an echo. Dryness in the atmosphere. I hope it never happens to you in Jesus' name. Stand to your feet. Is that an, I don't think there's any announcement. Nothing to say. Stand up. Same time tomorrow. Tomorrow I won't start preaching. I'll preach at 8.10. Whether you're here or not, I don't care. 8.10. Maxine, 8.10. Say amen. amen. Mm, 8.10. Father, thank you for your blessing and your help. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank you for your faithfulness. Keeping the covenant. Keeping the covenant. Thank you for all the things that we have vowed today and what we will seal tomorrow. We leave it with you. And we enter into this next realm of your calling and your favor. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hi. Thank you for watching the First Love Church YouTube channel. Now, if you like this video, hit the subscribe button. Thank you again. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe.